So our, uh, our fourth video talks about um, sin being um, when we miss the mark. Um, and the reason that we are even able to um, sin and then overcome sin in the first place is because we have um, the mercy of God. So the message of the gospel and Christ himself in our hearts um, work very hard to help us overcome sin in our own lives. God is always actively seeking us. He is calling us. He wants us to come home. There's nothing that God loves more than when somebody who was a sinner um, returns home and um, repents and wants to live out a better life. God sees every person as important. He sees nobody as being like, you know, beyond help. And uh, he wants everyone to return to him that has walked away from him. And if they do, no matter what they've done, he will uh, fully embrace them. Because he is um, truly a God of mercy. His love is unconditional. His love is endless. And he is going to do everything that he can to make sure that um, he that he's got us but we still need to do our part we need to turn our hearts toward him toward love and at the times that we don't do that we need to be able to admit that to confess that um, to repent and we need to be able to close that gap um, and take that step towards God because God comes like this close to us but we need to be the ones that say yes to him and, and reach out and respond to his call so the Greek word for sin um, is hamartia which basically means missing the mark um, we're created with like a target purpose in our lives uh, when we sin we, we miss that target sin pulls us away from love um, sin goes against um, it goes against reason it goes against human it goes against our nature that we are created for it goes against our conscience um, and it, it hurts us it wounds us because it betrays everything that God created us for God created us for love so uh, when we don't act with love um, it's really something that um, is difficult for our hearts and for our minds uh, to handle. It disrupts the solidarity in our community. It offends God. Um, and, and sin is ultimately the opposite of love because it is selfishness. Um, we have to remember uh, the example of Christ where Christ was um, a witness to and a victim of hate. Um, he was mocked, ridiculed, um, people treated him cruelly and violently, they betrayed him, they abandoned him, um, but instead of pitying himself and lashing out at the people who hurt him, um, Jesus really clings to love and to faith, and so instead of rejecting those people that hurt him, he actually says, you know, God, please forgive them, they don't know what they're doing, like, you know, um, the robber that's up on the cross next to him that defends him to the other robber and says, you know, who do you think you're talking to? Like, don't you know this man is the son of God? And he said, you know, Lord, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus could have said like, oh, who do you think you are? You're, you know, you're a robber, you're a criminal. And instead he said, yeah, yeah, you're going to, I will remember you. You're going to be with me today. You'll be, you'll be with me. In paradise and that demonstrates that the love of God can um, overcome anything it can overcome hate it can overcome um, poor choices it can over it overcomes sin it even overcomes death so there's a lot of different ways that we do sin though um, we can sin against the commandments um, we can engage in things like idolatry impurity lust greed dishonesty envy anger um, all of those things and basically uh, we can either sin by doing something to an extreme or by not doing something enough we can um, 
break a commandment by ignoring it, by not doing it, or we can violate it in the sense that we actively do something that is the opposite of what is asked for. We can sin against God. We can sin against our neighbors. We can sin against ourselves. Um, and sins can be things that we think, things that we say, things that we do, things that we don't say, things that we don't do. Um, and sin is always rooted in the human heart. But fortunately, love, charity, grace, those are also rooted in the heart. And those are the sources of good and blessing in our lives. But we have to feed that part of our heart. So in the Catholic Church, um, we think that there's kind of like two levels of sin, which makes sense. So we call them mortal and venial sins. So mortal sins are those deep, profound, more difficult to commit sins that completely turn our hearts away from God. A mortal sin is a sin where we are deliberately choosing a way of living that has nothing to do with love, kindness, charity, joy, any of that. And mortal sin is not necessarily a single act. I mean, it can be if you um, commit a grave enough sin. But being in a state of mortal sin um, is more or less a, a, a way of living apart from God, where you're living in darkness. You're, um, your natural inclination, your habits that you formed um, turn toward sin and darkness. However, we are always able to move back from that state into a state of grace. We are always able to bring ourselves back to God through the sacrament of reconciliation. We also have venial sins, and venial sins um, mean that, you know, it's, it's kind of like a temporary like lapse in judgment. Um, it's like a smaller action or an action um, where it's not really a pattern or a habit. It's just kind of like a, a small off decision or a small off day where, you know, we didn't make the best choices. So there's a couple of conditions that we need for um, mortal sin. And those things are called grave matter, full knowledge, and free consent. So... Grave matter means that there are um, certain actions that automatically cross the line from venial to mortal. So we're talking about like murder, adultery, stealing, lying, slander, rape, greed, violence, any of those kinds of things. Then you? Full knowledge means that um, we know that what we're doing is a sin and we are aware of the consequences. We know we're not supposed to be doing it. Um, and we can't pretend to be ignorant. Like, if we are ignorant of something um, being a mortal sin, that needs to genuinely be something that we're not aware of. However, um, because we have God's voice in our hearts, because we have a conscience, because we live in a community where we typically, um, our actions are, are witnessed by other people, uh, it is very difficult to claim that we don't know when something is genuinely evil, that we just did something and we have no idea, you know, that it's bad. So that doesn't really happen too often, that somebody doesn't have full knowledge of something being, um, being a sin. Then we also have full consent. Um, and this one is especially important uh, because this is the one that can really be um, variable. So full consent can be affected by a person's um, psychological state, their mental state, their social state, um, that can prevent them from having full freedom over their behaviors. Somebody can have a mental illness or a substance abuse problem that can um, affect their decision-making process or their words or actions. You can have um, a situation where somebody is um, threatened or coerced and so they're, they're behaving in a way that they don't want to but they feel like they don't have a choice because they're, they're scared because someone else is kind of manipulating their, their behavior. Um, so those are definitely things that we can take into account. 
but we should also make sure that we are slow to blame others um, other than ourselves when we sin. So we need to really examine in any sin that we do, you know, what part did I play in, um, you know, really agreeing to and choosing to um, do or not do this thing. And the patterns that we that we make in this life, um, they they really are repeated in, you know, in life after this. So the the more we live in darkness here on earth, and the more selfishness we engage in, um, that's really going to affect what happens to us after we leave our our earthly bodies and our earthly lives. And one of the main things that we need to watch out for um, are capital sins. These are often referred to as the seven deadly sins. These are certain attitudes and behaviors that it's really easy to fall into that we have to be very watchful for, more so than others. Um, and those are arrogance or boastful pride, greed or hoarding, envy or resentment, hateful wrath, so not just like general anger, but like but but steaming, burning irrational anger, uh, lust, gluttony or ignoring the poor, so taking way too many resources, whether that's food or clothing, or things that other people might need, and then also sloth or spiritual apathy, so that can be both like an unwillingness to do anything physically to contribute to your household, be helpful to other people um, at home or at work, and then also not being willing to put forth effort in your relationship with God. We also have to remember that we can be complicit in the sins of other people, even if we are not doing the sin itself ourselves. So if we participate in someone else's evil, then we have sinned. If we know that someone else is doing something wrong and we don't tell them that it's wrong, point it out to them, then we've sinned. If we order, advise, praise, or approve of someone else sinning, then we also are sinning. If we have the opportunity to stop somebody doing something bad and we don't do it, then we're also complicit in that. And if we protect somebody who has done evil, um, that is evil. You know, I have children. If one of my children committed a crime, if they robbed a bank or, you know, a person's house and I knew about it and I lied and pretended they didn't do it, um, I would be just as guilty. Like, you know, you can't, you can't protect somebody from, from their poor decisions just because you love them, um, because that's not helping them spiritually and it's not helping yourself spiritually either. God is love. He made us capable of love um, because he is love and he made us and he has filled us with love so that we can feel love and that it's within our power to choose love. Um, but again, it is up to us to be the ones to make those decisions and to take responsibility for our own actions. 